park. The parking lot is slammed. And there's a ton of cars out on the road too. There are some parking spots, but it's pretty packed. Sunday night, middle of August. And there were a couple of jackasses that had folding chairs out in the middle of the parking lot, blocking an entire aisle so that people couldn't get through. I don't know what's up with that. Dumbasses. But I'm just gonna head over here to the campground, see what it's looking like, and then probably head back into the parking lot. Well, I'm just sitting here in the back of my truck at Elkhart Park, just outside of Pinedale, and it's about 8.15. Things are starting to quiet down around here when I got when I got into um, the parking lot, it was kind of a madhouse. All the hipsters apparently had just got off the trail and were uh, drinking their beers, but they've since cleared out and it's quieted down. And we're spending the night here in the truck bed and the plan is to get up bright and early tomorrow, uh, 6.30, 7 ish, and uh, hit the trail. We are going to be doing uh, two nights in the winds, uh, going down Pole Creek Trail, past um, the uh, kind of turnoffs for Miller, Eklund Lake, I think, uh, past Hobbs, Seneca, Little Seneca, and then I believe we will hook up with the Highline Trail. Uh, if we were to continue on, we, we'd go on towards Island Lake, but we're going to go up the Highline Trail. Uh, past Fremont Crossing and uh, I think for the first night tomorrow night we will hit Gene Lake to camp which is about I think 13 miles and then the next night we'll we might end up staying two nights at Gene or the next night we might go to Upper Gene so this is my fifth or sixth trip in the winds my third trip out of Elkhart Park I've, I've done Titcom and Indian Basin twice so this is a new area for me even though most of the trail is going to be the same and this is the first uh, long backpacking trip well maybe second that I've brought my fly rod on because everyone's always talking about how good the fishing is here in the wind so I decided uh, I, I got to test the reputation so I brought my fly rod and some flies and uh, we'll we'll see if we can catch anything out of Gene Lake Upper Gene Lake I don't know how the fishing is there but I've heard uh, cutthroats in Gene Lake so I'm excited for that too this is the view outside of uh, my front door for the evening nice little sunset and uh, Nice and quiet out here now, and hopefully nobody pulls in next to me and starts bumping rap music in the middle of the night, like uh, like my last trip. So uh, probably gonna get ready to hit the hay soon, and we will see you in the morning. Good morning. It is right around seven o'clock, I think. Yep, seven o five. Been up for about half an hour, and. Just about packed up and ready to hit the trail, so let's just do a final check, make sure we got everything. We got anywhere from 12 to 15 miles today, which should be a good 7-8 hour hike. Um, that's a pretty full day on the trail, so we better get going. And there is Photographer's Point. Well, this is Photographer's Point. There's Fremont Peak and Jackson Peak, Ticcom Basin. Good, how are you doing? I'm We're rounding 
the uh, far end of Seneca Lake and pretty soon we're going to hit our junction with the Highline Trail and start heading north. We just passed the junction for Lost Lake so I don't know maybe another half mile or mile but you can see the terrain has definitely changed more in the rocky granite all around. Let's get around this bend. You'll probably be able to see Fremont Peak. Just coming up a little bit of a climb, maybe 250, 300 feet gain. And once you hit the top, you got views of Fremont Peak, Jackson Peak. I believe that's Indian Pass over there. And our junction with the High Line should be coming up. I actually thought it was going to be uh, earlier, but I think it's coming up here pretty soon. So we are on the High Line Trail now, probably about a quarter mile in from the junction between the High Line and the Indian Pass Trail, which goes on to Island Lake and Titcom Basin. And we're probably about almost ten and a half miles in for the whole day. So the next big stop is Fremont Crossing, where you cross the Fremont River. And that should be right around uh, 12 miles, so another mile and a half, mile and three quarters from here. And then our final destination for today is supposed to be Jean Lake which is probably another almost four miles from here. So we'll see. Shoulders are getting a little sore. If we get a little tired, but it is uh, about a quarter to two. So we got a lot of time. We can uh, take it slow and take a lot of breaks and uh, hopefully make it all the way to Gene Lake tonight. But if not, then Fremont Crossing could be our final destination for today. So we'll see. We are at Fremont Crossing, and that's the bridge over the Fremont Creek. We came across that, came up from down there, and the trail continues on that way. Um, in, I don't know, maybe a quarter mile or not even, we're going to run into another trail. And, uh, it's not the one that we're taking today, but we might head back on that one on Wednesday. Uh, if we continue on to Gene Lake, Lower Gene Lake, we're going to have to cross over, uh, not really a pass, but um, a high point of 10,600 feet. We're a little over 10,200, so almost 400 feet elevation gain, which isn't uh, that much, but after 12 and a half miles, of uh, up and down hiking that uh, <laughs> seems like climbing a mountain so um, it's like 3.30 I'm pretty tired right now but I did want to get to Gene Lake and I think it's only like two miles from here maybe not even to get to the very uh, boundary of it so I might rest up another few minutes throw the pack on and get back on the trail we got some clouds coming in from, I think that's be the, the north. And not supposed to storm today, and they don't look like storm clouds, but you never know. So we'll catch back up with you guys in a little bit. Getting close to Gene Lake. We are up here probably around 10,000. 600 just about above tree line so you can kind of see how the terrain has changed look at these huge boulders just placed all over there nice little pond there could be a good campsite up there but we're gonna head on to uh 
Jean should be just over this little hill. Well, finally made it to Lower Jean Lake. There it is, pretty big lake. And found this campsite right here. We're supposed to be 200 feet from the lake and I'd say we're about 200, especially since we're up here on this uh, little cliff. So it's a ways away. And we're kind of hidden too from the trail behind this rock. Uh, spot's fairly flat, a couple rocks sticking out. So we'll have to be a little careful. But the mosquitoes are out in full force. And uh, we got the head net. We already put on some bug spray. Um, we're going to get to putting up the tent. And then uh, we can head down the lake uh, over that way pretty easy. And see if there's any fish in there. I don't think I could ask for a better spot than this other than uh, the mosquitoes, but besides that, this is pretty perfect. It's a little uh, sloped, but I think it'll be all, all right. Uh, I had just enough room to get everything pitched and pulled tight. Um, we're sloping a little bit this way and a little that way, so I think I'll probably sleep with my head over here. Um, this right here is what I'm really psyched about, this slab of granite. I don't know, in my last video I mentioned uh, how important it is to have a good flat rock in your vicinity when you're backpacking to sit on, to lay on, to cook on, to throw all your crap on and organize. And this slab right here is just beautiful, perfect. It's huge. Got a little table right here. Little chairs right here. Um, got a little uh, a little spot to lean against over there. Get my tan on tomorrow. Yep. This is pretty spectacular. And I think that's over Indian Basin area over there. Those peaks. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, we can't see the other side of Titcom Basin, like Fremont Peak. These uh, peaks are blocking our view. But on the other side of this would be uh, Titcom. Maybe a little bit more that way. I have to double check, but i um, not sure the names of these peaks over here, but they are pretty awesome. And I think the trail... I'm not sure if it would keep going up there or around this way to get to Upper Gene Lake, where I'm planning on heading tomorrow. I think it should only be like a mile. Uh, I was considering moving camp and, and camping there for night too, but this spot right here is just so good. I'd, I'd be an idiot to pack this up and take a gamble on Upper Gene Lake, so I'm going to keep camp here tomorrow night too and from Fremont Crossing I know I was saying earlier how much I was dreading the 600 feet elevation gain it actually wasn't that bad so getting back there on Wednesday shouldn't be too horrible uh, it's gonna be mostly downhill and then I think we might take a different route around Lost Lake um, which will actually drop us down a little bit to 9,800 feet. So then we'll have another uh, climb. Actually, the climb today from Fremont Crossing was 400. Uh, if I go to Lost Lake on Wednesday and climb up to Seneca Lake, after that, that would be a, about a 600 foot um, gain elevation. So, I don't know guys, I think it's gonna storm. Pretty serious looking cloud up there. Might pass over. It's clear straight above. Looks like the 
bulk of it is to the north. So I guess we'll see. But we're just hanging out here on the shore of the lake. I'm gonna shoot a couple photos. Maybe wait for this storm to get behind those peaks. Um, I left my tent open, so hopefully it doesn't rain over here. But it's just just up there, a couple hundred yards or so. Haven't seen a single fish yet. Uh, this could be a dead lake, <laughs> but we'll give it some time. Well, that storm's coming through, and we're getting hit with some heavy winds. Hasn't started raining yet. A few, a few sprinkles. The winds are pretty strong. Uh, I'd say 25, 30-ish, maybe even a few gusts above 30. So it doesn't look like it's going to be a big storm because you can already see the sun coming out on the other side. So we'll see. Once it dies down, I think it's time to cook some dinner. Well, good morning. It is... Around 7 a.m., 7.15, the mosquitoes are out in full force already, so I might as well get up and join them. Just about to put on some hot water and eat some breakfast and probably just lounge around for a couple hours this morning and then maybe try fishing and then head up to Upper uh, Gene Lake. Up here... See someone else is camped out. Sorry about that. I'm gonna focus. A couple tents up there. There's a big group, like 12 um, of uh, a group of 12 girls. I don't know if they were knolls or what, but um, I think only part of them, part of the group, camped over there. Yep, these mosquitoes are relentless right now. So I'm gonna get back to work and catch up with you guys later. And just like that, the Windmaster's got the water boiling faster than my Keurig. It is a pretty awesome stove. It's about 70 bucks, not cheap. But time is money. And give the old coffee cup a little extra rinse. I saw a mouse investigating it last night so I don't know if he climbed in or not and for breakfast we have a Taos Bakes pinion coffee and dark chocolate bar referring to Taos New Mexico made in Cuesta New Mexico I never had one of these but looks pretty good can't wait to get down in the lake and catch some fish hopefully
Wednesday morning. We're pretty much packed up already. It's about a quarter to eight. And I don't know if you can see back there, but we're shooting a couple sunrise time lapses. Sun's not quite up over the mountains just yet. Um, it's a little chilly, a little breezy right now. Actually, the temperature's fine, but it's just the wind. So um, it kind of feels like fall is knocking on, knocking on the door. So it's past mid-August, so any day now. We got a long one today, 14, 15 miles. Not looking forward to it. Um, I've done it before. <laughs> Every time I put on this trailhead, I always make the hike back out in one shot, and it's it's uh, it's brutal. So we'll give you guys one last look at Lower Jean Lake and the surrounding peaks. Pretty amazing. And uh, it's always kind of sad leaving the winds, but uh, not too sad about these mosquitoes that are swarming. So, all right, uh, we'll catch up with you guys later on. I thought I'd do a quick mention on uh, the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 3400. This is my first time using this pack. Wanted to get something a little bit bigger than what I currently have. Uh, just so I'm not, um, having to jam everything in there. So, this is a perfect size for me, the 3400. Um, I think so far, so good. Carries the weight pretty well. Uh, of course, the pack itself is super lightweight, and it's waterproof, which is, which is nice. Um, I kind of wish these pockets, or at least this middle one, was a little bit deeper because I stick a tripod in there. So it'd be nice if uh, more of it was secure down in the pocket. Um, I think the uh, shoulder pads and the hip belt are, are pretty good. There's definitely quite a bit of padding on there compared to other uh, packs that I have. One thing that's unique about this uh, the Hyperlite Mountain Gear packs is they don't have load lifters, which I do kind of miss, at least thus far. But all in all, it's a good pack. They're expensive. Uh, hopefully it lasts a long time. Um, but for the volume that I was looking for and the weight and the waterproof factor, this was pretty much the only pack that fit the bill. So, um, so far I'm happy with it. There's Fremont Creek, and this is what's known again as Fremont Crossing, South Bridge. Here's looking back towards Ticom Basin and Indian Basin. Island Lake should be just kind of over that little gap right there, I believe. And we've got Jackson Peak and Fremont Peak. And then Upper Titcom, you see those pointy peaks over there. And that's where we branched off to head to Gene Lakes. So we're about four miles in from our campsite this morning and walked through rain for maybe half an hour or so. Nothing too heavy, but heading back up towards Seneca Lake, gotta go up this mess and then drop down and then we'll hit Little Seneca and then Seneca probably in oh, a couple miles, two to three, maybe, probably two. Um, so we're making progress and looks like the skies are clearing up. Holy crap, I thought that day would never end. Total mileage was around 15 and a half miles. Uh, I didn't think it was supposed to be that, that long, but um, 
that's what the my watch GPS said both both times about 15 something it is about 430 now so it took us I think around just over eight hours to get back that's the thing about the Wind River Range if you want to enjoy the inner regions you're gonna to have to work for it and you're gonna to have to pay so was it worth it of course it was worth it did you see the scenery out there did you see how many fish I caught yesterday a backcountry trip in the Wind River Range is just incomparable I've tried to describe it to so many people but words can't do it justice you pretty much have to come out here on your own to experience it firsthand and when you do then you'll understand what I'm talking about. I hope you found this video at least slightly entertaining. And if you did, please like or subscribe. And we will see you on the next one.